Thanks, Danny, for joining me today um, to discuss what's going on in the business world during this kind of ever-changing climate that we have with the corona. Uh, virus. And those of you that don't know Danny Ballard, you really need to meet and know Danny Ballard. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny is a coach, he's a trainer, he's a business advisor, and he's also the co founder, along with John Zentgraf, of uh, Catalyst Success Systems, which helps uh, business owners grow their business and understand what their business is all, all about. So you're a perfect person for me to have this conversation with. And um, I'm Rebecca Monet, uh, Chief Scientist and CEO of Zorka Profiles. We provide profiling tools for franchisors and for uh, franchise brokers uh, that help facilitate that right fit between the franchisee and the franchisor. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Danny, is uh, this is a difficult time uh, for people and they're kind of reevaluating who they are and what their businesses are. Some of them are panicking, some of them are excited about the possibilities. Um, but what I know about me personally is a lot of my uh, identity and who I am is wrapped up in my business. And when I hit a speed bump, like a lot of folks would hit a speed bump, it it seriously affects my sense of confidence and my sense of self-worth. And, you know, it even affects my uh, focus. I was wondering if you could address that a little bit and, and what you see out there with the folks that you are coaching. Yeah, Rebecca, thank you for saying that. I think it is a really interesting time in our world, right? And so what happens, I think, when things like this happen, um, it kind of shakes us all up. And things up is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can feel very difficult to process. And so I, I think to your point, I think a lot of us have gone through situations in our life where we've had a shakeup, and it's what I call a crisis of identity. And it's where we start to really think about who we are and how we show up in the world. And for a lot of us, our identity is wrapped up in our careers, our businesses, our jobs, our incomes, our houses, whatever. And really who we are is much bigger than that. It's an inside out. It's a, it's a soulful place, not an, not an outside in. And so um, I think there's a lot of people right now going through this crisis of identity. And crisis not even necessarily mean a bad thing. Crisis meaning an important thing. An important time to get crystal clear about who we are, how we define ourselves, and about what we want for ourselves and our lives going forward. Well, and it is a great opportunity to do that. I think I've shared with you in the past, I had a major crisis eight years ago where when I came out of it, I had no idea who I was. And, it, and I had this wonderful opportunity to look deep down in my soul and say, uh, what do I represent and, and what do I want my legacy uh, to, to be? Uh, do you have any uh, recommendations for that franchisee, that business owner, that individual going through this uh, crisis, let's call it, uh, positive or negative, uh, yes. any recommendations for them as they get to that place of who I am is not just this business. It is more than that. How do, how do they discover that who I am part of themselves? <laughs> Yeah, great question, Rebecca. And you know, in our in our coaching program, we have a course that we wrote and is called Pinnacle Gift. And Pinnacle Gift is this whole concept of who am I really? How do I show up in the world? And what is my giftedness? It's what we call true north, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's a crisis when we start to do that work. It's our goal with our coaching program is to help business owners figure that out before they get to a crisis. <laughs> have that to give them insight to everything they do but it's really this inside out approach about their giftedness we call it a business fingerprint we all have a unique fingerprint in life just like um just like in our in, on our fingers and so with, in business we have that uniqueness the other thing that i would suggest there's two things that i think are really important number one is what are the questions we're asking ourselves and so it's a concept of self-talk um, there's some great books out there one of the ones i've recommended for years what to say when you talk to yourself um, but this idea of what is our internal self-talk, normally when we get into these kind of places, our questions start to sound like, you know, what is going to happen? What am I going to do? What if everything falls apart? What if, you know, this happens? And it starts to become a very negative spiraling self-talk versus how do I reinvent myself? What are my 
gifts? How do I show up in the world? What do I want in the next season in my life? So that positive affirming self-talk is a really important part of that. And that's rooted in a concept we call past, present, and future. And past, present, future is a very interesting thing, right? And so we all yeah. that. But really, if you think about it, um, past, present, and future, true joy, listen, listen to these words, true joy comes from living in the present moment. True. Rest comes from expectation, and all expectation is rooted in the past and the future. True joy comes and live in the present moment. So the way we like to discuss this is that we learn from the past, we plan for the future, but we live openly, authentically, and honestly in the present moment. And that's really where we are. And so if you think about in these kind of trying times, it's easy to let our self-talk go to the past and let our self-talk go to the future and start stressing out and, and worrying about things that may or may not have even happened yet, rather than stay in the present moment, be clear about who we are, take the steps that we need to take every day to make good decisions and choices about where we're going in our lives. I love that advice, that joy is experience in the present moment, yeah. uh, that if we're living in the future, we're living in the past, we're comparing ourselves to the way it was or, or, or the life that we see in the future and it's not meeting up to those pictures we have in, 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 the, you know, in our head, so to speak, right. then we can't experience that joy. And my guess is along with that, we can't experience peacefulness. Um, so, if we, and that's where we can make better decisions is in a place in the moment where we can make better decisions in, in this present uh, place that we're at. It reminds me of a conversation I had with one of our resellers in the UK mm -hmm. uh, this morning uh, where we're, you know, we're planning and we're strategizing and we're doing all that we're supposed to be doing as business owners. And then all of a sudden he shared a difficult situation with him. Now my normal process would be, I have another meeting coming up. I have this other thing and so-and-so is expecting this, or I, I got to get that thing out. And it was taking a moment saying, wait a second, an opportunity has presented itself for yes. me to get to know this individual at a deeper and more meaningful life to, to address this thing he has go got going on in his life. He's, he's, um, sharing a part of him that if this crisis hadn't come up, he wouldn't have shared before. So being fully present with him to listen and to, of course, let him know uh, that I understood or at least was going to try to understand and then um, build that more uh, authentic, real relationship, rather than just being contracts and business and you know, yes. whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Well, Danny, I really appreciate uh, hey, if I can say one more thing, Rebecca, about yeah. what's sick, because it's so powerful. Uh, one of our education topics speaks exactly to what you're saying. It's what we call not being tied to the outcomes. Mm. Being tied to the outcome is a, can become a very limited thing. So we we go into situations, phone calls, presentations, meetings with a client, and we've already decided ahead of time how we want it to turn out. And so oh, we. Yeah. We're trying to move it to that goal. In fact, sometimes we're even controlling it and sometimes hopefully not, but sometimes even maybe unconsciously manipulating it to get to a certain goal. When in reality, by not being tied to the outcome, letting it happen naturally, letting it unfold the way it's supposed to, normally it turns out better than what we were trying to turn it into anyway. And so, oh, so true. Example about how you let that be what it was, not being tied to the outcome, and it turned out to be something bigger and better than you even thought in the beginning. So, think I, I, it's beautiful what you're sharing. Um, the, the other thing I would say is the what else is possible. This is a time to ask what else is possible, right? What is possible in my life? What else is possible in my business? What else is possible in my relationships? What new ways can I reinvent myself? What new skills and talents? can I come out of this with? That's the energy that we'd like to move forward with. I totally, totally agree. And maybe we can address that in another little uh, segment because that's so important. Um, but this idea of, of identity and, and getting in touch with what that is, which requires a certain amount of self-reflection and, and yeah. also, in my opinion, it, it creates a genuineness and a transparency. And as we do that, I'm sure we're also getting it from our clients, you and your coaching clients, me with my franchise or uh, clients, and then not getting hung up on the outcome, but being fully and totally present, which is where the opportunity is anyway. And it's, totally. where, the, and it's where the joy is. 
Anyway, where the joy is. Where the joy. I'm going to go for the joy. I tell you, I like this idea a whole lot. Uh, so um, if, if I can ask your permission, I'd like to do a couple more uh, discussions around some of this uh, and get you back on the phone again. Okay. Sounds great. I'd love to. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you.